Hello YouTube, my name is Teddy and this is the sixth video in my series talking about my hypothetical cartoon reboot for Winx Club. If you're new here, the first video in the series is the one where I draw Bloom. And I'll be redesigning lots of characters still, but today we have one of my favorites. I actually did the drawing for this video a while ago. For some reason, I originally planned on doing this this video third, but I just couldn't get the script right for whatever reason. So now, without further ado, Princess of Andros with a passion for dance, it's Aisha! Andros is a powerful kingdom on a massive island off the west coast of Solaria. However, its borders actually extend out far past the shoreline. It's a kingdom some might call amphibious. Centuries ago, two ancient kingdoms were joined in a beautiful marriage between the land-dwelling prince and the sea-dwelling princess. And now, most people are able to live their lives either above or below the waves, should they so choose. Aisha's parents are the main king and queen of this country, and they rule from the center of the main island. However, a secondary royal family lives off the coast, helping to govern those who live a fully aquatic lifestyle. Though these two families have always been in good standing, the king and queen on land have a unique pressure on them. They fear if they're not the best leaders they can be, they'll lose the support of those underwater, and their country would be torn apart. And so, Aisha was raised to be the perfect princess. To be polite, courteous, intelligent, poised, and selfless. She feels a great sense of duty for her people, and her whole life she has put her desires aside in order to present the person her parents expected her to be. There was one part of her princess training her studies growing up that she did look forward to dance class. I think Aisha probably would have learned at least a little bit of a few different types of dance, but her parents would definitely have her focusing on ballet. Um, I've seen uh, some other redesigns where Aisha is like ripped and that's really cool, but it just doesn't work for the world that I have, I guess, because her lifestyle as a princess, she wouldn't be able to really go to the gym and work out or, you know, like drink her protein shakes and bulk up. So I interpreted her athleticism in sort of a different way where it's more of a focus on um, flexibility and stamina and things like that. Don't worry, she's still going to be super into hip hop, but I think that that will be something that she gets into a little bit later after she gets some more freedom in her life. Aisha does enjoy ballet though, she has ever since she was little, and I think a big part of that was because her instructor at that time was a very kind woman who was actually a lot more patient with Aisha than a lot of her other teachers were. And best of all, she would bring her daughter Anne with her to class as well. Anne and Aisha were about the same age, and Anne loved getting to dance alongside her, not because she was the princess, but because she was her friend. Aisha didn't realize it at the time, but she definitely had a huge crush on Anne. The only other part of her studies you could say she really looked forward to was history class. Most of the people of Andros are pretty proud of their history. Yeah, it was an act of love that made them such a strong kingdom after all. But I think that Aisha in general is just a major history nerd. Her parents, seeing this enjoyment, would absolutely encourage her and give her access to all kinds of historical texts from around the world. It would be from one of these more ancient books that she would learn about the village of the Pixies. In my reboot, pixies would be a race of small humanoids formed from flowers shortly after the first fairies were created in order to be their companions and assistants, and help with caring for the mother dragon and her child. 
However, after the mother dragon recovered from the lengthy process of laying her egg, and the pixies no longer had her around for protection, they found their numbers began to dwindle, and quickly. In an effort to protect the small population that remained, the leader of the pixies created the Morphix, a substance that flows like fresh honey but can harden into a form tough like solid oak. Morphix was created to allow the pixies a safe haven away from harm. At the bottom of a beautiful Andrasian lake, disconnected from any rivers or ocean, the pixies hid themselves away from the world underneath a dome of Morphix their sky now to be a sparkling magenta hue for centuries to come. However, it seems somehow the knowledge of this place ended up in a memoir that just so happened to land in Aisha's to-read pile, and once she had realized just how close this lake must be, she set out in search of it. Her quest took a few months, as she had to sneak out most of the time, but one night, she found a sparkling lake that she was convinced must be the one. She dove down to the very bottom where, instead of sand, her fingertips met a surface like that of gelatin. Trying to break through its surface, she gave a solid thwack with her palm, but it resisted against her, turning solid. Calming herself by looking to the full moon high above, past the water's surface, she had an idea and used her magic as the fairy of waves to gently push her hand into the now softened surface. The substance rippling as she pushed her arm through, eventually feeling dry air on the other side. So she braced herself and plunged through. On the other side, she found herself falling towards a sleeping city, illuminated by streetlights only as tall as she was. Fluttering her wings, she drifted through this new place, where, on a little bench near a beautiful rose garden, she found a very small pixie snoring softly. After deciding to wake her up, Aisha realized she seemed to be quite young, and so brought her to a nearby house. And this was the start of Aisha's friendship with the pixies, which would end up being crucial in her learning to really master her powers. She had been avoiding using them very much after they'd been drawn out. Like Stella, Aisha's parents had given her tests to see if she was a fairy. Aisha and her family actually even attended the Solarian Gala meant to celebrate Stella getting her wings, something very rare for them to do. But it was in the hopes that it would encourage Aisha's wings to manifest as well. And... When they actually did soon after, her parents gave her the whole week off instead of a fancy party, knowing that that would be what she wanted. Skipping ahead a few years to age 17, Aisha had a bit more freedom. As she had gotten older, she was given a new ballet instructor and hadn't seen Anne in years. But luckily, she still had friendship in Pixie Village. She would visit as often as she could and was even able to go during the day sometimes. She loved seeing the sunlight stream through the Morphix, and would sit with Piff at that first bench where they met and watch it ripple from the water above. One day, while having tea in the town square with some of her pixie friends, Aisha suddenly felt the ground shake beneath her and heard a crash from above. Shards of Morphix rained down all across the magenta sky, but... Instead of water rushing in, it was Lord Darkar and his minions. They swarmed down upon the city, and pixies scattered in every direction. With Pip still nestled in her pocket, Aisha ran for cover. She found herself in the office of the head pixie, Ninfea, who was firmly in Darkar's grasp. Ducking behind a desk, Aisha heard as he demanded the pixies' magic, certain they held a piece of the dragon flame. This was a kind of power Aisha had thought to be only a myth. Ninfea defied Darkar's command. There wasn't even a flicker of the mighty flame in the whole city, she told him, to which he simply declared the pixie magic would have to do instead. 
he swore to capture every last pixie he could find, and they would be defenseless without their leader. With that, Darkar crushed the little pixie woman in his fist, dropped her on the ground, and moved out onto the street. Aisha, panicking, ran over to Ninfea, who in her last moments gifted her the power of Morphix and asked her to save their people. She told them both to be brave, and closed her eyes. Completely overwhelmed, Aisha ran back to her hiding space and promptly fainted. Hours later, she was found by royal guards inspecting an earlier report of a commotion. She was passed out in a small home at the bottom of a dried-up lake bed. She told her parents everything that night, and all they could do in return was hug her tightly. Eventually, Fearing that Darkar would return for her and Piff, Aisha's parents arranged for her to spend some time elsewhere, a place they thought would be safe and she would be happy. Althea. The king and queen of Andros had informed headmistress Farragonda of their daughter's situation. She was to attend under a new identity, Layla, guardian fairy of Amethyst Lake. A fake name a fake title, a fake place. This is who the audience and the Winx would meet her as, just another background fairy. As a guardian fairy, Layla would be taking fighting classes and training in self-defense. I think she would have a lot of classes in common with Bloom and Flora. And the rest of the girls would definitely have seen her around. They don't really start to interact, though, until one day Early mid-season one, when Bloom encounters Layla while snooping around the deeper parts of the library. They recognize each other from class and have a brief, friendly, yet awkward conversation before hurrying along. When Bloom brings this up to the other girls, Tecna mentions that she actually has noticed her coming around a lot while she works in the library. And it is weird how nervous she seems in such a cozy and relaxing place. Stella also swears that Layla looks so familiar and she must know her from somewhere outside of school. She brings it up every time. When Bloom sees Layla there again, she asks her straight up what she's up to, and the two actually swap information. Layla is able to give Bloom information on Domino that she learned back home and Bloom lets her in on what the status is regarding Darkar, because even though she had been sent to the fairy school with the heaviest defense in the world, and somewhere out there some higher-ups are investigating the pixie's whereabouts, Aisha never stopped trying to find a way to help. Moving on to her fairy form now, I want to give a few quick notes about her design. Aisha is athletic and a dancer, so I always have her in a sports bra, And even though I did want her outfits to have sort of a sporty, casual feel to them, borderline, like, tomboyish, I did use a lot of reference images of sort of off-duty ballerina looks, which I feel like you can really see in the first outfit. Then, for her fairy form, not only was I looking at ballerinas, but I was also looking at, like, fashion swimsuits. Since she's from Andros, I just felt like that made sense. And don't worry about her hair underwater, it would never get tangled. Um, An in-universe reason would be something like the people in her kingdom have proteins in their hair that keep it from getting tangled. It keeps it, like, silky or something. Um, But really, it's just, like, cartoon magic. (laughs) Oh, also, I picture her hair texture as um, maybe 3A, 3B. I think she looks really cute with those two beads that I put Um, in the front pieces of her hair. I think that when she's in her everyday form, they would be gold. But then, when she goes into her fairy form, all of her jewelry is platinum. I wasn't sure how to draw it without it looking silver, but in my head, it's platinum. (laughs) Also, I want to mention really quickly that this is still season one of this reboot. I flipped around some parts of the plot so that Lord Darkar would be the villain in season one. The tricks are still there, of course, but they're more working for Lord Darkar. He's going to be the one that kind of turns them over to being fully evil rather than just being, like, mischievous little assholes. (laughs) Um, 
we'll really get to see the tricks shine in season two of this. Um, they'll be building us up towards our big bad villain with a capital V, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, so in season one, we get Aisha's introduction and her backstory. We learn about the pixies, even though we really only meet Piff. Uh, we get like an origin story for the tricks. And of course, Dark Bloom. After Bloom gets taken and turned to the dark side for a little while, I think that's when Layla would tell the Winx who she really is, and she would give them any information she has to help them prepare, but I don't think that she would have any real plans of actually fighting alongside them. She would probably still be too worried about what her parents would think. But then in the final battle, when she sees all of the students of Alfea banding together to stand up and fight against evil, she would find the courage she needed to face Darkar, and with the power Ninfea gave her, she would be crucial in his defeat. Unfortunately, the fate of the Pixies would still be up in the air at the end of the season, but the Winks are on the case. And from now on, Layla can be who she really is. Princess Aisha of Andros, Fairy of Waves, and Wielder of the Morphics. That's a lot of backstory in one video, huh? I'll have to save talking about her relationship with Naboo for his redesign, and yes, I'll be doing his and the specialists eventually, uh, but I will say for now that as much as Aisha cares about him, she's definitely a lesbian, and once she is able to attend Alfia under her real name, she can really start working on her character development. I really hope you like her outfits. I tried to keep the vibe of the original show while simplifying them down for a more animation-friendly look. And I think that this version of Aisha would be very happy to wear them instead of what she had to wear as a princess. I think she would be much more comfortable. But wrapping up this video means we've covered all of our main six Winx girls. I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. If you have, leave a like and comment. Um and follow to see who I do next. The tricks are coming soon, but I have one more video before I get to them. See you then. Bye.